Every year since 2012, the world's hunting journalists, media creators, influencers, call them what you will, gather in Germany for the Zeiss Media Hunt. It's a two-day feast of festive orange and driven big game shooting with all the pomp and oompa oompa of German hunting tradition. This year, Paul Childerly is in the hot seat for GB, armed with Zauer 404 Hornady ammo and, crucially, the Zeiss V8 in 1.8 14x50, a classic dual-purpose stalking and driven hunting rifle scope. Here, shown in action on the range on the day before the two-day hunt. So, Paul, we know it works. Yeah, slightly happy, relieved, a little bit uh, shaken, actually, because he was going full, full tilt. I think his adrenaline was up and uh, took some serious stopping. Obviously there might have been one miss. You didn't drop your boiled sweet, I noticed. No, no, no. Priorities, priorities, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, Mufon come through. I'm not sure if it was a male or a female, but didn't have no horns. And uh, the next minute, a pair of reasonable size and ball come right through there. And they were looking, they were, obviously they're older ones, because they were looking, they're running, looking, running, looking. And um, again, first one was a little bit of a miss, clear miss, and um, and the second one eventually got onto it and pulled my act together and got a good strike. So you've been beating yourself up a bit? I've been, yes, I've been crying a little bit on the first one. On, on the inside? Crying on the inside? Crying on the inside, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or blaming somebody else. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Yeah, it's good, yeah. good, good, thank you. As long as we know that. <laughs> now, you may think that the boar in the ride was a possible hit. After the drive, we go carefully over the ground and we find no sign. Uh, basically, we're just doing the follow-up um, every shot. You mark the spot, the position, go and check. And it's quite good with, with these leaves and stuff, even though there's, there's, uh, it's pouring with rain, you can still see the scuff marks and uh, She's not just looking for blood and bits and pieces, seeing how the animals reacted afterwards, whether it's if it's good on its feet, if it's heavy on its feet. Um, yeah, which gives you indication, obviously, in which way to go to. Does the to rain help or is that a problem? Uh, it, it hinders really, because obviously if there's any specks of blood, um, it washes them off. Um, some of these big boar, um, you know, they, they take the shots incredibly well and there's not much exit. Um, so of course they'll run on and they're, they won't, they won't bleed out at all, so there'd be no, no, nothing to trace, nothing to track. So that's when obviously a dog comes in to its own. Back to the drive and missing that boar is having an effect on Paul. Worse is to come, his missing woes are not over. I can't even see a boar in this shot. Maybe he was hallucinating. But then we see a sow and a sounder of piglets hole up in the brambles in front of our position. The beaters locate them and flush them. Yeah, basically come in the top corner into this thick area here. And uh, yeah, that rain come down, they just stuck right in the middle there. So we just waited poised until these guys come in and pushed it through. And of course, it's quite funny, they, they sit so tight and then the dogs go in and then it's like, they sort of semi sort of charge at the, the beaters and then the beaters like have to erupt because otherwise they're going to get charged by the boar. And then they erupt out and then we have to try and do work our magic, which is quite difficult today because everything's... How is the old magic? It's it's uh, room for improvement, but they are going like stink. Oh my god, they're like flat out. Everything's flat out today. But none of this trickling through gently. It's everything's full pelt, full. Ah, uh, just in just in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A successful day after all, and Paul gathers up and Gralix his rodo and his boar. Plus, there's still day two to look forward to. The hunt staff lay out the game and everyone who has shot an animal receives a fur frond to put in his or her hat, or hair if you have a man bun. We find out how well everyone else has shot and it's a chance to catch up on the kit we're using. Uh, what I'm currently holding in my hand is the Sour 404 XTA. Um, XTA means that it has an adjustable cheek piece and this is especially uh, a big advantage when you're on a driven hunt. So you have the classic pistol grip, you're very quick in reloading as you've probably seen, but most importantly you're in one line with your scope, you can align it, so as soon as you feel the contact towards the adjustable cheek piece you're spot on and this guarantees you there that you're really quickly on the target, quick shooting, as you have seen here, this is really necessary for the driven hunt. The 404 has the huge advantage that it has a cocking system, a hand cocking system, so this is a very safe mode. There is no 
uh, cocked firing spring now inside. So um, it's it's a yeah the safest safety system you can actually have. But nevertheless, it's ergonomically perfectly placed, so you can just slide it forward. Red dot indicates you're on fire. You can uncock it, and you're in safe mode again. And um, very simple, but very safe. Now, while the British bang on about Brexit and the French are setting fire to their country, for Germans, the big problem in their immediate future is African swine fever. One of the shooters here, Dr. Nina Kruger, is a leading authority on the subject, and she says it's about to hit Germany and hit hard. Um, the latest on African swine fever is that it jumped um, about 1,200 kilometers um, from the last point in Eastern Europe to Belgium. Um, nobody really knows how it got there. There are different rumors. One of them is that um, Belgium soldiers bought it from the Baltics from a huge exercise um, that was happening there. Um, since it was first discovered on an army base, um, that is a likely scenario. Uh, the other idea that people have is that um, truckers might have brought it from the east. This is how the uh, disease might have jumped Germany and directly ended up in Belgium. Um, the short term risk is that it is, is coming this winter um, because uh, it's always brought to new areas by humans and um, especially Belgium has a lot of attention now. There are a lot of wild boar around it and um, when it was first discovered um, the cadavers were already four uh, to five weeks old so nobody knows how much spread already and um, if it reached other areas where people might have not discovered it yet and um, are still spreading it to other areas so yes it, could, it might be possible that we get it this winter. We will do the same um, as they did in Czech Republic and in Belgium now. We um, will establish a core zone that will be fenced and all wild pigs will be culled inside there. Um, in the surrounding risk areas um, there will be a ban of um, entering agriculture lands, um, forests, uh, stuff like that. And um, potential um, pig farms might be um, culled as well. Day two, and overnight Paul's misses and his ability to hit trees has earned him the nickname Chainsaw Childerly. Has he found his mojo? The answer, happily, is yes. By the end of the drive, he has four shots and four animals, including a red deer calf. It's their, their uh, top of their hierarchy in the forest. Red deer comes first all the way down to the, to the uh, predator species, they call them. And uh, yeah, this is the first one, in, first one of the day for us. Nice long shot. Well, long shot. We obviously had the scopes. We wound the scope up. It come round, went broadside, and took the shot. Happy days, cracking start. And what's your what's your personal hierarchy? Ah, boar, mouflon foxes. I love. I, I get the excitement from the boar, driven boar, driven foxes because it's. They're coming, and the, the, the excitement is there, and the heart's going. Um, with the deer, you know, I'm always a bit cautious and trying to get exactly the right one. Like with the roe deer, we saw lots of roe deer, but yeah, I, don't, I don't need to shoot loads of. As long as I shoot, yeah, shot the right one, I'm happy. So, and Paul shoots red roe, boar, and fox. Another roe come here. We left it, a little buck, um, and then another roe doe come in. We sort of like weren't happy about that, and then all of a sudden, fox come through, shot that. Rodo come round, circle round, just shot that, reloaded, and then dog died, then a bomb, and took a, well, we didn't know what it was, right the way through, full crawl around the bank, come round, and, and then a boar comes straight up the bank, straight up to us, and uh, stopped. And all I could see was head and shoulders, so I shot it, straight in the neck. So, boar down as well, so, four different species, red, fox, roe, and a mighty boar. Now you may notice that Paul is wearing camo with bright blaze orange all over it and you may well ask, what's the point of that? Well, we don't know a great deal about what deer and wild boar can see, but science is fairly sure they can't see reds and oranges. And that maybe blues are stronger for them. Here's Paul in his Shooter King jacket in mossy oak camo and me in the new Harkila camouflage pattern, looking like lemons in front of trees. Let's muck around with the colours in this shot to try to replicate what the game animals can see. That was beechwood. This is Christmas tree. Now let's leave Paul cutting up his boar and see how the other shooters, all of them YouTubers, got on. 
Here is Christopher Clausen from Norway. It's actually, on, it's my third year and every year here I think I've shot a row on every stand. And also today I shot a row. I'm, I'm happy to shoot anything on a driven hunt, you know, it's just fun being, uh, being out and seeing some animals. And if I have the opportunity, I'll definitely shoot a row, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks like I'm calling it actually, but uh, I was standing in the tower and um, and I saw a row coming and from behind me two dogs were coming and they sort of met up with the row. So luckily for me the row turned and did like a like half circle and came straight towards uh, my stand and stopped 15 meters in front of me. So that was a pretty easy shot, yeah. Uh, today's row, it, it I heard a lot of noise for from some dogs uh, and it it was getting closer so I was ready and I could see a uh, row came alone running towards me full speed <coughs> and it turned also straight in front of my tower and uh, yeah well yeah well it didn't stop this time so I was lucky with the shot and, and got it and then all the dogs came uh, so it was sort of chased by the dogs it was a bit exciting actually yeah well, it has been brilliant uh, days here together with Size and uh, with you friends from Field Sports and everything. So it has been really, really marvelous. Uh, it was a wild boar who came uh, quite uh, sneaking, a sneaky wild boar. And then uh, uh, we could take a shot at it and it was running quite fast, but it was an interesting situation. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was two shots. So first one shot, I was uh, uh, not 100% perfect, but the second shot was perfect. Yeah. Uh, Redder came very nice, calmly, stood still, easy shot. And uh, then we had one more red there uh, with a little bit more speed, and uh, but uh, it was uh, quite easy shot. I whistled uh, for the calf to stop and it stopped immediately and then we could take a shot. So, so like a highly trained deer? Yeah, yeah, very, very trained deer. Yeah. Like a dog? Yeah, like... <laughs> today I got a young wild boar. Uh, the shot was, I mean, today we had a lot of rain coming down, we had a lot of wind in the tree, so it was hard hearing. And um, I hear them coming, I see them and then I see them, spot them through the trees. It's a leading sow with two young wild boars behind it. And then they stop at 40 metres. And um, um, I've got the scope on it, got the video camera going, and uh, drop it on the spot. So, yeah, no, it was really, really good. Like the British, the Norwegian finds this kind of shooting different to what he's used to in his own country. Not definitely not uh, like this, like big driven hunts with lots and lots of people. We have like drives, you know, we can have uh, five, six or ten people and you have one or two guys walking with dogs, but it's it's nothing like this actually. So I, I, I like the German culture of this. I've been doing it in, in, Germ in, in Poland and Hungary as well. But this kind of hunt we do here is, uh, you know, the Germans, they, they have um, control. I mean, they're, they're good and also so yeah, so I like it. Yeah, we do a lot of driven big game hunting in Sweden. Actually, that's one of the most common uh, ways for uh, do big game hunting. Moose, wild boar, red deer, fallow deer, everything. You always uh, aim for having it standing still, 40 meters, perfect everything. But yeah, uh, especially since we got more and more wild boars, uh, the, the shooters has been uh, practicing more and been better and better in shooting in, uh, in uh, running animals as well. Yeah. As ever, a magnificent couple of days and more than a hundred animals off to the game dealer. Seven of them from, well, the newly renamed Paul One Bullet One Animal Childerly. Thanks a million to Zeiss, whose fabulous products you will find at Zeiss.com. <laughs>